loves being on the water for sports, for leisure, and for supporting the world's economy. Critical for protecting our nation's ports and for fueling our passions. Let's see how one company is meeting the demands of the boating industry. Let's go with Intrepid Power Boats on the water. This show is being brought to you by Seven Marine, the most powerful outboards on the planet. Intrepid power boats, one of a kind, one at a time. Intrepid Power Boats has been delivering on its promises of leadership and innovation in performance, comfort, and safety since launching our first boat in 1983. No two Intrepid Boats are alike. Each is ordered, built, and customized one precisely satisfied customer at a time. Then, backed by the finest owner program in the industry, when we say one of a kind, one at a time, it's more than a slogan. It's what we do. Welcome back to Intrepid Power Boats on the water. Intrepid Power Boats is located in sunny Largo, Florida. This company and their very unusual business model is led by Ken Clinton. Ken heads the company known worldwide and is positioning Intrepid to be a leader in the future of the boating industry. Basically, I started, uh, it'll be 24 years uh, ago in March, and when I first came to Intrepid Power Boats, um, it was as a, just a lot, just a boat builder. You know, I built boats on the line and I worked in a, an area called Station One where I used to prep all the hulls and prep the liners and prep the decks and I used to glass them all together and, and uh, I worked my way up from there. I, I, the next position after that was a de departmental leader. And, and then after that, I turned, uh, they turned me into the line supervisor uh, over several years, you know, and then I became the vice president of manufacturing and then uh, COO and then president six years ago. Uh, it's something that, you know, I've been with them so long and I've been able to evolve with the company through all, all the positions. And it really comes in handy because when I'm sitting with customers and I, we're specking out a boat and we're trying to figure out what we can do, being someone that's a hands-on builder, um, I can have those conversations with them without having to go back and refer to engineering or, or the people that build the boats on the line because I'm one of those guys, you know, so it's been something that's really worked well for me. And it also works well for me managing the company with my employees because they know that I am, I'm just like them. I mean, and, and I'm a boat builder. You know, I, I, we joke in the plan all the time that you know, I'm just a, a boat rat with a fancy title. And, uh, and, that, and they, they love that, you know, they love the fact that I'm one of them and, and I'm not some guy that, you know, uh, dad bought me a boat company and gave it to me to run or something. You know, I've worked my way up through the way. Every Intrepid Power Boat is custom built to customer specifications. One of a kind, one at a time. Innovation for Intrepid is what we're known for. Uh, one of the things that most people know uh, is the dive door. You know, we were the first ones to do this uh, huge uh, door in the side of a boat and actually penetrate a hull side. And you know, that was something when we first did it was for a police department. It was Tampa, uh, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department. It was a rescue door is what it was. And it really evolved into somebody seeing that and asking, you know, can I get that on my boat? Even though we did it for, you know, uh, a, a police department. And we asked why, and he said, you know, I'm a diver, and, and that's something that, you know, we, we would, it would be really convenient for us to get in and out of the boat. And that's really how it started, and how it evolved. And, and that dive door has evolved uh, probably 10 different times over the years, to the point where now the dive doors and some of the models actually lift up, rotate in, and go over the gunnel, take no cockpit space, and they have fold-out ladders that come from underneath the cockpit sole. Uh, it's, it's neat how that 
how that all evolves over time because we know that we can always make it better no matter what the, the innovation is at the particular time. We know we're never satisfied and we know that we could take it to the next level and it's fun being able to have customers see what we're doing and give us a, a new project and for us to take what they're asking for and actually make it better than what they even ask for. It's, we're always, we're never satisfied and we always know that we could take it to a, a, another level. Intrepid Power Boats has been delivering on its promises of leadership and innovation in performance, comfort, and safety since launching our first boat in 1983. No two Intrepid Boats are alike. Each is ordered, built, and customized one precisely satisfied customer at a time. Then, backed by the finest owner program in the industry, when we say one of a kind, one at a time, it's more than a slogan. has been delivering on its promises of leadership and innovation in performance, comfort, and safety since launching our first boat in 1983. No two Intrepid boats are alike. Each is ordered, built, and customized one precisely satisfied customer at a time. Then, backed by the finest owner program in the industry, when we say one of a kind, one at a time, it's more than a slogan. It's what we do. Welcome back to Intrepid Power Boats on the Water. The Miami Boat Show is held every year in January and is a perfect place for the world to see the impressive lineup of intrepid power boats. It takes a lot of work to prepare for such a big show and move in is no easy task. Uh, setting up for the Miami show is is huge. Uh, it's, you know, so many people don't understand that they just show up to the boat show and poof, all the boats are there. Uh, it's, it's a major undertaking that takes uh, a lot of man hours and a lot of effort, especially from our guys here at Intrepid Southeast, and that's the facility that we're at right now. It's our sales facility and it's our service facility and our service gang. They're the ones that go down there and set the whole thing up along with our vice president of sales, Christian Gonzalez. You know, that entire group puts so much effort into getting these things set up, and they do a great job every year. Because all the boats used at the boat show are customer-owned, extra care goes into the handling of each one. It just has a very, very custom paint job, and uh, it would be extremely expensive to try and repair it if we damaged it. So we're just being, uh, you know, just as careful as the rest of them. We just want to make sure that the paint's a little delicate, so it's fresh, so we just want to make sure we protect it as best as possible. Yeah, I don't know if I could face them if I ended up scratching that paint job. So uh, I did what we could to, to wrap the, you know, protect the boat as best as possible. We did the same thing when we loaded it from the marina to get it on the transport truck before it got here. Um, we took extra, extra special care of it. No mistakes. These guys are pros, though. It's $1 million hanging in two straps right now. Yeah, it's a very expensive paint job as well. It's all custom work that we did on this boat. Every boat that we build is sold and it's built per customer, so this guy spec'd it out a certain way and it turned out really nice. But uh, we have a great relationship with them, you know, being that we have a year wait on most of our boats, we get to build a great, a great ongoing relationship with our customers and, you know, uh, we'll ask them if they'll allow us to showcase their boats inside the boat show and, uh, and that's how we're fortunate enough to have these displays. I've been with uh, the, the Miami Boat Show for, for 20 years now, you know, and with that comes a, a, an opportunity to have a good location within the convention center. Unfortunately, this is the last year that the Miami Boat Show is going to be in the convention center, and they're going to be moving it to the Marine Stadium in Miami, so we're unsure about how that's going to go. That's all in development. So with us knowing that, we actually expanded our boat show booth this year. We figured if we're going to have it here for the last year, we're going to go out with a bang. And, and by doing that, we put two, we actually have two 47 foot boats, both with quad seven marine packages, which uh, takes up a lot of room. So by acquiring that extra space in the convention center, it really is gonna pay off. So we're excited for our customers to see this much larger display than we've ever had before. 
Basically, when we put boats on our boat show, those are slots that are chosen ahead of time. And the customer specs out the boat however they want to use it. So that's really how we determine what goes into those shows. We don't choose the engines or, or how it's rigged out or how it's painted. Our customers do. So whether the, we're showing Yamahas or Seven Marines or Mercuries, it's not our choice. It's our customer's choice. Um, the latest set of engines that uh, you'll be seeing, one of them is Seven Marine engines. We were the first group to ever do a set of Seven Marines. And then we were the first group to ever do Quad Sevens. You know, we're talking about 2,228 horsepower on the back of a boat. It's amazing. Um, the Seven Marine crew uh, are an amazing group, and we're excited to be able to talk more with them at the boat show. Understanding customer needs is critical for customizing each boat. Uh, Bob definitely knows what he wants. Um, you know, we worked well together. I think from the very beginning, he gave us a general idea of what he was looking for. Um, we went through many, many renderings, you know, designing the top, designing, um, you know, the engine package, some of the interior upholstery. You know, we really went through the entire boat with him um, from stem to stern. I just made sure it was what he was envision, uh, what he was visualizing um, before it came to fruition and, and before we completed the build. So it was a it, it was a great effort, I think, on all parties involved. And um, this is what it came out with, so it's, uh, it's a beautiful boat. Intrepid owners are more than happy to show off their boats. Uh, I was involved every step of the way. I had probably put a couple of hundred hours of thought into it before we even began the process. Uh, I've had a lot of boats. This is uh, Impeccable 5. And so I had probably uh, four or five boats that weren't impeccables. So maybe it's my tenth boat. And so once you gain, uh, you gain a lot of experience. Uh, it makes you understand what you're going to need and how you're going to use the boat. And uh, I was in the custom truck business my whole life, and so I've got a lot of experience with custom and. Because I'm uh, retired, I knew this was uh, the boat I had dreamed of, and I wanted to build it. I wanted to see it become a reality, and the people at Intrepid have made that happen. Uh, they were great to work with, and uh, uh, I feel that uh, you know of all the companies that I've uh, built boats with, I've never had anybody cooperate and tolerate the demands that I've uh, put on them for this boat. I would say that the, the people at Intrepid have been uh, absolutely as solid as can be. I have never worked with a group uh, of guys from Ken, uh, Mark, and certainly Christian, who was uh, my first contact. Uh, I probably would not have bought this boat if Warren for Christian. Uh, this guy is... Um, if I were still in the car business, uh, for sure, he and I would be partners somewhere. This guy is uh, just a tremendous asset. But everyone at Intrepid has had the attitude, you know. Sometimes you get lip service, but they don't follow through. These people have followed through uh, more than anyone I've ever seen in my life. And so, uh, uh, you know, I've had the boat uh, for a few months now, and I can tell you they're still following through, still coming up with ideas, uh, still telling me, look, uh, we want to do this and we want to do that. So when they asked to borrow my, my baby to put in this show, I was hard pressed to say no. I thought he was going to tell me no. He's, uh, you know, again, he, he, he's, uh, he keeps all of his toys impeccable. And, um, you know, he, uh, I, I think he second guessed it for a little bit. I assured him that we take very, very good care of our, of all the boats that are here. And um, I gave him my word that I would personally overlook his, you know, oversee his boat throughout the loading and unloading. You know, it's got a custom paint job on it that um, he, he spent a lot of time designing and, and a lot of money to come up with and uh, want to make sure that, you know, we take care of his personal property. Um, so we thank him very, very much for allowing us to use his boat here at the show. It's been delivering on its
promises of leadership and innovation in performance, comfort, and safety since launching our first boat in 1983. No two Intrepid boats are alike. Each is ordered, built, and customized one precisely satisfied customer at a time. Then, backed by the finest owner program in the industry, when we say one of a kind, one at a time, it's more than a slogan. It's what we do. Welcome back to Intrepid Power Boats on the Water. Team Intrepid sponsored fishing boat sees the day with Captain Jim Kelly as it the first stop of the 2015 Southern Kingfish Association Tour in beautiful Key West, Florida. Prior planning always prevents poor performance, let's just put it that way. We're gonna have a good day out there. A little windy, but we're on the right boat for that, so happy about that. The Stock Island Marina Key Fish Tournament and the waters here off of Key West are famous for producing huge kingfish. We, uh, we, <clears throat> we have a plan. Uh, we don't share that plan online, but uh, we have that plan. We fished there yesterday. Uh, in the morning was very productive and so we're going to head back there. I think the weather's going to be a little bit of a consideration. Uh, they're talking about 20 plus, so we'll see once we get out there how it looks. Is anybody is ever going to lead you that fish? It's that man right there. That's it. I know. Right, Perry? He's the man. He's the man. <laughs> You're in the area. Hopefully we'll be lucky enough to uh, Catch one. have a visit. Okay, we're getting ready to uh, start wetting your let out. Let's take it easy and just put them around up there and let you go here probably before 7 o'clock if we go like yesterday. 24. Water. Let's use common sense. Exactly. 62. 51. All right. It'll be a shotgun start this morning, and all the best fishing teams in the country are right here. Five to six foot seas are expected today. Now this well-known fishing grounds will be very crowded and the teams will be forced to stay closer to shore because the high winds and rough seas. So a lot of these trips are running 100 miles offshore and uh, you got a lot of other things to worry about. The one thing you don't want to worry about is getting home safely. Plus you want a nice smooth ride and you'll see today in these crummy seas that will probably be the softest boat out there. Uh, you know when we're running I would say we're normally 40 to 45. Uh, today, we're just north of 50, but it's just, you know, a shotgun start, so you want to get out of the way as fast as you can. You got boats coming on both sides in front of you, behind you. And uh, you also have to pick your way out of the group to go to your spot, try to get there by yourself, try to get it to yourself. Doesn't happen often. Most of the fishermen here, they all have the same spot, so. There's a lot of company when you get out off the off uh, offshore. There's a free diving tournament this weekend as well. They're out there for Wahoo, and we have a diver in the water off our port stern quarter. We just changed course a little bit to get away from him. We want to protect everybody and everything out here, so that is why we are heading up a little bit right now. Some divers, boats, waves. Makes it interesting. We gotta catch a fish in the meantime. Yeah, so I think everybody here is uh, here for one reason. They really enjoy it. So, yeah, it's a, uh, everybody's got work to do on the boat. Everybody's got a job. So the crew is, uh, is the way we get the job done here. We got uh, two guys who grew up together in St. Pete area that have been fishing for 20 years. I uh, actually fished with uh, Intrepid years ago, went up to the Nationals and uh, did quite well. Uh, and then the guy at the helm is a commercial fisherman who uh, taught me uh, commercial fishing about three years ago. And we've been friends ever since and when uh, the opportunity to take the boat and convert it into a tournament fishing boat, we found these two guys and Rick came on and it's formed a great team. Howling now. 
make sure my hat's tight. No, you just got to be very careful on uh, keeping an eye on your baits and the way the boat drifts. You have to, uh, you just got to pay attention. Plus, with the howling sound going through the lines, sometimes you can't hear the reels in there. And their fish just does decide to hit. So, right now we got three lines out. Let's see if uh, somebody wants to have some breakfast. I'm not sure what it is. I uh, took off again. Keep the gaff on the boat. You don't look at that thing and he just may be a king. Just saw that thing and took off running like one. First kingfish in the boat for Team Intrepid and Captain Jim Kelly. One in the bag. Next week on Intrepid Power Boats, on the water. The seas were a little rough, but the weather was beautiful, and the waters here produced an amazing amount of fish. The weigh-in treated lots of spectators to several kingfish, tipping the scales in the 65-pound range. Winner in this tournament brought in a new Florida State SKA record of 74 pounds. Now this amazing fish looks like a torpedo lying in the fish box. This show has been brought to you by Seven Marine, the most powerful outboards on the planet. Intrepid power boats, one of a kind, one at a time.